Namaste. So it's morning. I'm still in my pajamas. And I wanted to talk about early morning yoga or morning yoga, whatever early morning is for you. We all have a different routine. I get up really early. So, but when you get up in the morning, be mindful of your forward bending. And I should rewind just a little bit. This is something I learned in my yoga teacher training 10 years ago when I first started transitioning more my focus into the yoga world. And one of my teachers, um, and I, will, I won't tell you her name right now. She sees this, she can let me add her name if she wants. She, I may not remember exactly the way she taught it, but she talked about when we go to sleep at night, when we lay down or horizontal, um, the pressure is off of the discs in between our vertebrae. So many of you probably know in between your vertebrae, your bones of your spine, you have little discs that are kind of squishy in there. I think of them like shock breakers. And in the daytime when our vertebrae are pushing down on them, it is pressing out water, pressing out the moisture. And when we lay down to sleep at night, that pressure's off of those little discs and they absorb more water and they kind of come become overfilled just a little bit like little balloons. And so I think of that in the morning when I get up, that's why I feel a little stiff, if that makes any sense, because there's little, there's more fluid in between your vertebrae in those little discs, which we want them hydrated, that's good. But if you start to do a lot of forward bending too soon when those discs are really full, that can put pressure on your nerves or you know, on places where you've got some degeneration, it puts pressure in different places. So um, one thing that I learned early on that's really helped me with my body is when I, one, I try to wait 30, 45, maybe a full 60 minutes before I start doing any forward bending. When I first learned that, I stopped um, feeding the cat early. I switched the cat feeding time. Um, I moved my fruits and vegetables that I would need first thing in the morning, like to the middle shelf or at least the bottom shelf. So I wouldn't have to get all the way down in the crisper um, if I wanted something that soon. Um, you know, people going out to pick up the paper. Um, when you do, if you absolutely have to get that paper as soon as you get up, think about when you're bending forward, if your cat won't leave you alone, bending your knees, using your hinges. We so often uh, round our back and I've got my jammies on, so I don't want to round my back too much. I work with a lot of folks that are uh, 80s, 90s, 100, and some folks are really this way. And I think we do that enough on our own. So most of the time I'm teaching to open up through your heart, keep your spine long. So in the morning, if you've got to bend over, bend your knees, hinge at your hips, keep your heart lifted up and your spine long. Use these hinges in your body. And I know your knees may be stiff as well. So they need to warm up too. So don't rush into bending over. Try to maybe start planning your morning routine um, with those adjustments. And just something to think about, something to be mindful of. So sorry for that lecture, but I figured if I needed to remind myself of that or remind my students that you might want to know it too. And being in my pajamas early helps with that. So and this is also in response to a hearts and bone yoga challenge. I think that's her studio. She's on Instagram, a super awesome teacher. And she is trying to break the stereotypes of sexy tight yoga pant teachers. And, you know, just yoga is so much more than poses and what we're wearing. And that's kind of what it's turned into in our culture. 
So breaking that mold, I do yoga in my pajamas all the time. So let's do a little chair yoga and break some of that mold too. So turn your toes straight ahead. Try to sit forward in the chair so you're not leaning back. Scooch to the front, not too far on the edge, but just enough so you can really bring your hands to your legs, push your feet down into the floor, make sure you're in a sturdy chair and bring your hands to your heart. So your feet pushing down, your spine strong and long. Draw your abdominal muscles in. And I don't think I said, I really, I try to wait again 30 minutes to an hour before I do a lot of exercise or yoga practice in the morning. So just food for thought, give your body time, especially in the winter. And we can remember the yama ahimsa, which means non-harming. So not harming our bodies, not harming ourselves by starting to be mindful. And start to connect with your breath on the inhale, feel your spine strong and long, lift to the crown of your head, feel your feet rooting down. And as you exhale, just feel your abdominal muscles start to hug in towards your spine. We're all holding a lot of tension right now. So as you inhale, allow your abdominal muscles to relax and allow your abdominal muscles to expand. And then on the exhale, draw in and up, pressing down into your feet. So slowly lower your arms down by your side. Keep pushing your feet down. If you were signed up for my uh, videos online, those short uh, office chair videos, um, some of this will add on, except for now we're in a more sturdy chair, not at our office in our pajamas. So let's start, uh, roll your shoulders forward and up and down, and then push into your feet, shrug back and up and down. If you've been practicing with me and you have blocks, feel free to add your blocks. Put one between your feet or one between your knees. One more deep inhale forward and up and down and then push into your feet. If you've got a block, squeeze it back and up and down and then bring your hands to your lap. Take a few moments, close your eyes, either part way or all the way and notice any sensations you feel. Keep feeling your feet push down into the floor. Try to press evenly in your right and left foot. Feel your hips press into the chair and I'm pushing my hands as my own teacher, reminding ourselves to push down. That downward energy. Feel your sternum rise up and shrug your shoulders up by your ears. Deep inhale and exhale forward and down. Deep inhale, push into your block, shrug your shoulders up. Exhale back and down. Two more, deep inhale, push. Inhale up, exhale forward and down. You might even close your eyes here, just tuning in to Deep inhale, what you feel from the inside of your body. One more deep inhale, shrug up. Exhale forward and down. And then push into your feet, shrug up. Exhale back and down. And then bring your hands to your lap. And close your eyes all the way or part way, tuning into any sensations. And you may perceive these pauses as too much rest, but really it's time for our brain to process. We need it and our nervous systems need it more than ever. So as you inhale, lift up through your heart, lift through the crown of your head, try to shift your ears over your shoulders. 
Deep inhale, gazing over your right shoulder. Keep holding your left shoulder in place. Inhale, lifting up through the heart. And then exhale, rotate your head forward. Lift through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale, straight ahead. And then lower your arms down by your side. If you don't have blocks, even if you do, look at your feet. Turn your feet straight. If you're one of my regular students, you know I like two blocks. I just didn't want anybody to feel like they couldn't do yoga because they don't have blocks. Just turn your feet straight. The blocks are adding on and they're adding onto your core. They're activating your core. So they're really worthwhile. If you think they're not doing anything, hang out with me a while. And, and I think you'll start to feel what these blocks can do for us. Um, so I've got my penguin pajamas on. They're my grandma's. And so let's do what I call penguin pose. You're going to push your feet down, squeeze your blocks, shrug your shoulders up by your ears and bring your arms out to the side. So, you know, when penguins walk and pretend like you're walking, you push into your right foot and your left foot, feel yourself squeeze your blocks. Feel your right hip, your left foot press down. Don't forget to take some really deep breaths. As we exhale, deep inhale, we're going to drop our arms and shoulders. <sighs> Good. And then sit up long through the spine, lift up through your heart. Let your arms be heavy. Notice any sensations. And then push your feet down, shrug your shoulders up by your ears, tense out to your fingertips. Deep inhales and exhales. Keep lifting up through your heart. It's like your shoulders are telling your ears a secret. One more deep inhale, sigh as you drop your shoulders. <sighs> Good, so that release, the release through the shoulders, that release through your sigh. It seems silly, but it's important. We're all holding a lot in. We're holding a lot of tension. Most of us are kind, respectful people. And so sometimes we, we hold things in and that's good. We want to be civil and kind and in that way, but we also can't uh, hold everything in and harm ourselves. So taking moments to release it. And you can still say those things, writing them down. My friend was reminding me yesterday, finding ways to communicate more gently. So let's shrug your shoulders up one more time. Never mind that lecture, push down. This time as you shrug up like a penguin, Squeeze your shoulder blades back. Keep lifting your arms up, lifting up through your heart. Deep inhales. Push your feet down. If you've got blocks, squeeze them. You might push right and left a little bit like you're wobbling at the, the ice like a penguin. One more deep inhale, sigh of relief. And then bring your hands to your lap. Take a few deep breaths. Noticing any sensations, any changes. Let's do a few cat cows. You could keep your blocks if you have them or you can set them aside. Inhale your heart forward. Exhale, rounding out a little bit. Move through your range of motion. And just like when we were talking about early morning bending, Really go slow, slow or smaller ranges of movement in the morning, especially the earlier it is in your day. So really honoring our body, remembering ahimsa, non-harming. Now, as you come forward, push your feet down, feel your feet stabilizing your body. Feel your hips stabilizing your body. If you've got blocks, squeeze them. That's going to activate your core. And make circles in one direction. 
And sometimes I'll say, keep your spine strong and long. So meaning just keep it long and steady as you rotate, pushing your feet, your hips, trying to keep your hips glued down. And I'm pushing my hands into my legs. So that's always a version that's gonna activate your core more. You could also, let's rotate the other direction. Remember, you could be more free, push your feet. Don't be too free this early in the morning. Still moving mindfully, you could dunk one shoulder towards the opposite knee a little and then the other. Always remembering a himsa, non-harming. All the time, but especially early in the morning, especially with our own bodies. And the next time you come forward, you could rest. So this is something that came up um, a lot of people fold all the way forward immediately, and especially early in the morning, maybe only lean forward on your hands. So I'll turn to the side a little bit here. So, you know, you could lean forward, but see my spine is still long. If it's okay, you might come down to your elbows, but I'm trying to keep my spine long. Our back does round. So I could come down farther. You can see it's starting to round, but I'm not going to because it's a little early still. The sun's just now coming up and I don't want to put that added pressure on, on, my, on my nerves there because of those little discs being a little full. And I could feel that, just that little bit that I rounded forward, even though my knees were bent and I was hinging at my hips, I could feel a little pressure on my back. So that really helped me when my teacher taught me that and in my daily life, you know, I, I hurt less. So we wanna hurt less in our bodies. Okay, so if you've been sitting up long and strong, so you could be resting forward with your back um, nice and long. You can also just rest back in your chair this way and bring your hands or a strap or towel behind your right leg. And this is something you could do laying down. This is something to do. And again, not being too aggressive, just easing into it. So you could lift your leg up and back a few times. Deep inhales, moving away, exhale, hugging in. You can keep hugging in and rotate one, your ankle in one direction. Lay back, lift up through your heart, but don't let your head flop back. Rotate your leg the other direction. And my range of motion right now isn't what it's gonna be later this afternoon. So really, again, reminding yourself this is morning. Even if it's not morning and you're, you know, you're having a hard time, if you're still in your pajamas later in the day, right? If you're not well, lay back in your chair, rest, deep inhale, lift up through your heart, but keep your head supported. As you exhale, you're gonna hug your leg in. And I know breathing's hard sometimes. The way I think is as I inhale, my belly's gonna expand a little bit when the air fills up my lungs. So I need space as my leg moves away. And then as I exhale and hug my leg in, that's pressing the air out. And notice I'm using my strap. I like my strap earlier in the morning. If you came to my afternoon class, my hands are there, but that's a little, maybe a little too much this early. So adjusting our practice is good. <laughs> Rest your leg down. Rest your hands for a few moments. Deep inhales and exhales. Notice any sensations, any changes. And we forgot to rotate your ankle in one direction. So you could lift it up and do that. And the other. You didn't forget, I forgot, it's early. <laughs> mm, the sun's starting to really come up now. Rest your leg, take some deep inhales and exhales. Mm. 
And as my stomach rumbles, I should say you might wait to eat your breakfast and, and do these practices first if you're doing the early morning. If you're doing it after breakfast, I would wait another 45 minutes to an hour after before I would practice just so your body is focused on your digestion and not on getting circulation out to your muscles and bones. So let's see, we going through my little details there. Early morning practice. You could do a little balancing. You could push your left foot and lift your right leg and then push your right foot and lift your left leg. You could do that a few times. Remember we're easing into the day. I'm the opposite of the rest of the yoga world, huh? I remember when I used to get up at six and do a bunch of crazy forward bends. Good. Each inhale, push, lift, feel all four corners of your foot, push, lift. Good, then windshield wiper. So we rotated your ankles, let's massage your knees. Massage the backs of your knees. Keep lifting up through your heart. And then bring your feet back underneath you and let's do pigeon stretch. So if you're in a power chair or a chair that has arms, if you have really tight hips, you can bring your foot to your left foot and just gently guide your right thigh open. Try not to push on your knee, press more in the middle of your muscle leg in the middle here. You could put your foot on a block or sometimes I like to use my little stool here it's my shoe putting on stool, but you can use it for your stretch too. Some of my students tell me, I do the stretch all the time when I put my shoes on. That's right, you do. So you could be there. Sometimes some of us put our leg up here to put our shoe on. So if this feels, if you're feeling any tension on your knee as you raise your leg up more, then lower back down. Our hips are gonna be tighter in the winter, so you don't wanna overdo it. It's the same muscles, just less intensity. So I'm gonna stay down on my stool so you can see that version for a change. If you're up here, that's great. Wherever you are, your knee, your leg is gently rotating open. We call that external rotation. But again, you don't want to push it so much you feel anything in your knee. Feel your left foot press down, lift up long through your spine, and exhale, reach out and forward. Inhale, push your foot down, re-lengthen your spine, lift through the crown of your head. Draw your abdominal muscles in as you hinge forward. So where do you feel this? <clears throat> A little sensation is good. No ouch. If there's an ouch, back up. One more deep inhale, re-lengthen. Keep drawing your abdominal muscles and slowly, mindfully hinge forward. And then go ahead and release. Rest back in your chair. Show wiper if you have a stool, if you have an ottoman or you could even bring another chair up here. We can demonstrate that sometime. Woo, sun's coming in now. You can still see my legs So Let's do the other side. So cross your left foot, bring it over to your right, whether it's on the floor or up on a block, a stool, a stack of old encyclopedias. You're gently guiding your hip open, no pressure ever on your knee. Same shape, you're just intensifying, making the pose more potent when you come up higher. I'm gonna stick with the earlier in the day version. So press your hips down, push your right foot down and the edge of my left foot's pushing down as I lift up long through the spine, deep inhale. Draw your abdominal muscles in. You might close your eyes as you hinge. 
Again, tuning into our internal landscapes. Deep inhale, relengthening. Exhale, reaching out and forward. One more deep inhale, each inhale, long, strong spine. Exhale, reaching out and forward. And then slowly come back up. You can set your stool off, uncross your leg if it's crossed, and bring your feet and knees together. If that, yeah. Bring your knees and feet together. Push your feet down into the floor. Squeeze your legs together. Lift up long through your spine. So if you have anything going on with your back, you may not want to rotate this early. You may not want to rotate for a while. I just talked to a student about not rotating for a while and see if her back starts to get better. We don't know what's going on in there. So push your feet down. Squeeze your blocks. I need to tell her to go see one of my doctor friends. Inhale, reach your arms up, deep inhale. Keep squeezing your legs together. If you can't rotate, if it's too early on your exhale, hug your abdominal muscles in, feel I'm squeezing my knees and I'm inside of my body turning. Can you see that? I'm turning my core muscles. I'm not gonna show you my belly. <laughs> Ooh, but I feel that. So you don't have to rotate. If it's okay for you, bring your left hand to your right leg. Your right hand is at your low back and you're lengthening, drawing your abdominal muscles in as you gently rotate, more gently than you would in a class later in the day. Push your feet down, squeeze your knees, concentrate on the lengthening, the squeezing in and up, and a little bit of a rotation this morning. And slowly unwind. We're in the Roaring 20, so let's do the Charleston. Woohoo! And then zip your knees up again, push your feet down. Feel your adductors working to squeeze your knees together, lift up through your heart. Again, you might draw your abdominal muscles and feel them. Everybody try that. Can you see how? I'm not letting my shoulders and everything move, but you can see I'm working those muscles. I learned that from my students that have rods in their spine. They, they're not supposed to rotate, but they can still activate those muscles. So you might try that or bring your right hand to your left leg, left hand to your low back. At your low back, you're telling yourself to lengthen at the low back. Keep pushing your feet, squeeze your knees as you lengthen, drawing in. And if it's okay, gently rotate to your left. Keep pushing your feet, squeezing your knees as you lift up through your heart, deep inhale. And slowly release, do the Charleston. And then rest back in your chair. Those of you who have blocks, you might put the block behind you to lift and support your chest. It'd be way up between your shoulder blades. Way up here. If you don't have a block, just slay back and open up through your shoulders. It's hard for me to stop. You might reach your arms out and up a few times. Deep inhale, reaching out and up. Exhale, slowly lowering down. I'm gonna put my feet up on the stool. Oh, the sun is glorious this morning. Take a little load off before I teach and just bring your left hand to your heart, your right hand over your abdominal muscles. Feel yourself naturally breathing. Noticing any changes. You're always welcome to lay down on the floor if that's better for you. And 
these next few breaths, just take a few moments and acknowledge yourself for practicing. We need everyone to be taking care of themselves right now. So I thank you for taking care of yourself. Thank yourself. Every little bit helps. And then take a few more moments and send some prayers for peace to someone, maybe a group of someone's, maybe a multiple group of someone's that might need some peaceful energy, some positive energy today, some grounded energy. Thank you so much for taking care of yourself so that you can serve everyone you come in contact with. Namaste. Thank you for taking care of yourself. Remember about ahimsa, not harming. Make sure you start being mindful maybe of the early morning bends. Make sure you're trying to bend your knees a little more, hinge at your hips trying not to let your spine round forward. I still catch myself. Even brushing our teeth is a little bit of a forward bend sometimes, right? So always trying to keep our heart space open as we move through the rest of the winter and the rest of our tumultuous times here. So thank you wherever you are for keeping peace in your heart by taking care of yourself. And thank you for signing up for my chair yoga videos. I've got classes, new classes online on my website. So check it out. Namaste. Email with any questions. Stay safe. Be kind.